Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. And today's game up on the tabletop is called Blockness by Blue Orange Games. It plays two to four players, takes about 15 minutes to play, and is for ages eight and up. And in the game Blockness, you are going to be one of several Loch Ness monsters who are kind of trapped in the lock. And due to the size of the lock, you are trying to extend yourself to show off your greatness to all the tourists and whatnot. Uh, but other Loch Ness monsters are doing the same thing, and they're trying to block lock you. And if you're able to show off your entire structure uh, before they do, then you will end up in the local newspaper and maybe become the most famous Loch Ness Monsters of the Lock. And that's basically the idea of the game. You'll be placing out different pieces, attempting to uh, kind of circumvent your opponent's pieces, and you'll be placing your head and your tail out to kind of elongate yourself. And if you can do so and block off your opponents, you'll win the game. We played this live, which I'll have a link down below as well. I'll show you what comes in the game right now, and then we'll talk about my review for the game. Here we have the game Blockness by Blue Orange Games, and currently it's going to be set up for four players, and this is everything you get in the game. First of all, the game box, which is obviously going to come with a cover, as well as a place to store your different Loch Ness monster pieces in these four areas here. This is the game board, which you'll place above the game box area so that it fits nice and snugly right on top here, so you'll have this 3D effect on the box, thusly showing you the lake, which is the lock. Everybody is going to set aside all of their pieces in the game in, in any order they, they, that they like, as well as, of course, they're going to take the head and the tail and place it on the lowest piece. It could be longer, it could be shorter, but it's all going to be the lowest piece. So when you set them up just like this, they should be at the same height, and there's only going to be one piece that is the lowest in all of the pieces that you have. After that, you're then going to go ahead and take uh, your piece and place it in turn order. So I'll place the little middle of the box right here. Uh, maybe we'll start off with this, the player that's playing the Black Loch Ness Monster, place that one like that. The next player can then go ahead and place theirs, and they'll do so in turn order just like that and you'll be, be ready to begin the game. Uh, one thing to note too is you see the different colors involved in the game. Based on the number of players is how many of these colors that you utilize. In a two player game, you use the small one. In a three, you use all the way up to this one. And then in a four, full four player game, you use the entire box width. But you're always gonna make placement in this little area right here. Then, after that, go ahead and begin. Now the black player started, so the black player will go ahead and place. When you place, you can place adjacent to either side um, front or back of your monster. So you can place at the tail end, or you can go ahead and place at the front end. If you place on the tail end, remember it has to be on the left or right hand side, and of course in the back. If you place on the head, it has to be in the front or on the left or right hand side. So I'll go ahead and place it right here. Then you take the piece that corresponds to that side, and you place it at the end of the piece that you place. So in this case, you're going to have the tail, and you're going to place it on the very back end of this piece, forming a larger <laughs> Loch Ness Monster. Then the next player is going to get a chance to go, and they can then place as well. Now, when you place pieces, you can never place a piece under another player's piece, but you can place a piece over, just like that. And if you place a piece over, it can never be over another person's head or tail. So in this case, it's just slightly behind, so you're okay. And you'll follow it up by placing that, and then you'll pass. And the game will just keep going like that. Players are going to take their pieces, they're going to go ahead and place them down, switch either the head or the tail, and keep going until eventually you run out of pieces. Um, if you run out of pieces first, uh, you're going to win the game. However, if you can't place, you'll have to pass. And if you pass, it might be your last pass, and you might not be able to play anymore. In that case, you're likely to lose the game. But you might get brought back into the game. So when a player gets blocked out for one reason or another, maybe they can't place in a certain space, because their pieces do not fit, uh, the next round that might be possible. Uh, the other way that happens is if everybody plays, or two players or more, place all their pieces. In that case, whoever's head is the highest on the bo the highest body is the winner for that player. So in this case here, Orange would have the highest head, and if this was the end of the game, and they all had placed their pieces, Orange would win the game. And that's pretty much the idea of the game. Go around the table, placing your pieces, following the rules, and if you can place out your entire monster, or the last person that's currently able to, you win the game Blockness, a super cute little game that has a 3D feature to it, and of course one that involves utilizing your pieces above other players' pieces and avoiding the heads and tails of the Loch Ness monsters surrounded in the lake.
So this is basically a kid's game. This is, in, in a sense, uh, you're starting off with placing a Loch Ness monster down based on the color of your choosing, and they're all a little bit different in their own way, and you're going to start off in the spaces that are provided for you. With a longer game and a larger amount of players, you're going to be utilizing more space on the board. With a lesser amount, with lesser number of players, you'll use less amount of the board. And of course, the board is going to come in the box, which is a really nice little thing. I love how these kind of boxes are kind of set up uh, so that you can play the games directly on top of the box. And it Kind of gives that like 3d feel of your monster because your monster is coming out of the waves on your turn you're placing down the pieces it's really straightforward you'll place it left right or, or in the front or in the back depending on where you're placing it along getting your monster trying to block your opponents off they can always place over you but never under you and they can never go over a head or a tail or you either and so there's the strategy involved right there is how you place where you place and when you place it if you get yourself blocked off you can come back into the game it's possible typically it's because somebody's head or tail is blocking you and so you'll be able to come back after that happens when they're able to move their piece. Uh, and players are obviously able to strategize to make sure that you kind of block yourself off. Because at the end of the game, it's possible for more than one player to elongate their monster totally. But the person who has the highest head out of the water is going to be the winner in that case. And so utilizing strategy just to block off players' head pieces, allowing them to be able to move only from their tail, can be unique as well. Uh, typically, players are going to be working for themselves rather than just messing with you specifically. But when there's a case in which you can help yourself and hurt another player, it's a perfect move to make. And of course, the game ends abruptly. It's really, really quick. Once you've got your pieces out, you're done. Check to see who was able to place the most after everybody goes around. Remember, uh, if there is a tie, of course, the head is what makes the difference. Uh, the quality of the pieces is high. All of these pieces are really, really nice. It looks like you're crafting a little Loch Ness monster, and the head and the tails fit in very nice as well. Each of the pieces are going to be arranged in different ways, whether they be longer, whether they be taller, or both long and tall. And it just works. This game was a lot of fun on our live stream. I think, uh, I think un unilaterally, everybody agreed that this was their favorite game for that night, and for good reason, because it is a ton of fun. It's quick, it's simple. Once you play once, you want to jump back into it. Now, there's a range of strategies in the game, and uh, the replayability is there, but you're basically playing the same game over and over again as far as place down the monster pieces in the spaces provided for you. There's also a little bit of an expert mode, which is nice too. You can place your Loch Ness monster. Um, instead of one space away, two spaces away, and that'll be the ruling from now on, thusly kind of limiting uh, how you play because there's less space allowed because you're kind of like pushing your monster out and you have to start thinking in different ways in order to secure the spaces that you need. And eventually, though, when the whole board gets all put together and there's a ton of blockades, blockade, blockades in your way, all these different locked monster pieces and parts are like kind of coming together everywhere, it gets a little crazy. But nothing to the point where Ages Aiden Up won't understand. This is a game that's going to work very well for families. It's going to be work very well for kids. This is a game that I can easily see as a Christmas present for somebody who is younger and you want to have parents jump in and play with it as well. This is a ton of of fun. It's very straightforward. If you see it and you like the game, gameplay style and you think you understand the basic concepts of it, then you're going to enjoy the game Blockness. It's what I would recommend for anybody who's got kids and likes a little bit of a puzzle game with some unique little like pieces that kind of represent toys in a way. I had a ton of fun with this one and so did everybody else. Pick up the game, link down below in the description if it's for you. This will get my seal of approval, but only for kids. This is mainly going to be a kid style game and if you like uh, games like Sura, but want something a little, little simpler, a little quicker, a little less thinking, uh, then this is going to be good for you to start with, start off with. I had a ton of ton of enjoyment with this one, and surprisingly, we played this over and over again, even after the stream. So that just goes to show that even if it's uh, people that are over the age of 30 playing this game, we still wanted to play it more and more and learn the different strategies as to how you place your pieces in the game. Blockness. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Blockness by Blue Orange Games. If you'd like to pick up the game, there's a link down below in the description. Go ahead and like this video. Go ahead and comment on this video. Let us know what you guys think. And this, this is a game that would be good for you and your kids. You can also go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Hit that subscribe button. And of course, the bell notification button. It does greatly help us out. And we do greatly appreciate when you do do so. There's a live stream every Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. PST on here, YouTube. Facebook and Twitch, where you can join us and play games just like this one. And of course, you can win games as well. We give away a game around every week to any of our people that are viewing it. And we, of course, will utilize Patreon money to help us do the shipping. So if you want to help us support uh, doing the shipping out for the games that we can win on our streams, join us there. We also try and give out some extra additional stream content. And whenever we make a new game, we'll post up there as well. Regardless, though, I definitely appreciate you guys doing so. And of course, if you would like, you can also go ahead and check out the website 
website, unfilteredgamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. Join Brian and our other writers there to see what new reviews they have going on on the site. And we, of course, do additionally have giveaways there as well, where you can share out uh, the content from the website, thusly allowing yourself to win, potentially, a game. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time. And as always, I look forward to delving into the lock with you next time. 